So there's a feature of Minecraft data packs that apparently almost nobody knows about. Lately, I've had people in the Discord server asking about how you can remove vanilla recipes, advancements, loot tables, etc. from the game entirely. Some people have come up with some very creative ways to do this. Most of them involve overwriting the vanilla files, and in fact, I actually made a video along those lines myself about four years ago. But in the current version, and actually going all the way back to Minecraft 1.19, there is a very simple way to do this. And given how shocked I am about how few people actually know about this feature. Today I'm going to take just a little bit of time to kind of explain how to do it for yourself. So I've just created a brand new data pack and I'm inside the data pack right now. You may notice that it doesn't have a data folder, it only has pack.mc meta. This is why I am guessing so few people know about this feature. It's controlled from entirely within pack.mc meta and you don't have to go into the data folder at all in order to use this feature. So if I just open up pack.mc meta, it's formatted, you know, like it usually is. So I'm just going to add a new field called filter and it's just an object with only one entry and that entry is block and then block is a list of objects. You can have as many of these objects as you like and they all follow exactly the same format. I'm just going to say namespace minecraft and then I'm going to add this field called path with a path to an existing file. So what I have just done if I go ahead and reload this data pack is I have completely removed the diamond pickaxe recipe from the game and just to show you that I'm not completely making that up here's a reload and if I try to craft a diamond pickaxe uh nothing will happen. This is not a result of do limited crafting I do not have that setting turned on. The diamond pickaxe recipe literally just no longer exists and uh that's all there is to it. You can remove any vanilla file in exactly this manner. Except not exactly. You can't remove every single one. But any data pack file that is reloadable, as in you can update it using the slash reload command, can be removed in this fashion. So, the types of files that can be removed in this fashion include functions, structures, advancements, recipes, item modifiers, loot tables, predicates, and tags. All files of those types can be safely filtered, and if you do so, they will just completely stop existing in the game. Now if you're trying to filter something that is not reloadable, that being a data pack file that is not of any of the types I just listed, there's kind of a lot of undocumented behavior. First of all, if the file is not reloadable, then the filter itself is also not reloadable. So to get the filter to take effect, you'll have to either shut down your server or exit your single player world. I would recommend against filtering non-reloadable files in general. I've tried it myself a few times, a lot of them will just completely cause your server to not start. Or or if you're in single player, it'll cause you to go into safe mode. Like if, for example, you try to filter out the nether dimension, the game does not like that, so your world just will not start. Also, there are some other data pack file types, like painting variants, for example, where if you filter even one of them, it breaks all of them. And yes, trust me, I have tried this. I'm pretty sure enchantments are similar, but I, I haven't really tested that one. The point is that filtering non-reloadable files is somewhat dangerous, and you can try it at your own risk. Okay, but another Enough about what you can't do with filters, let's look at some more of the stuff you can do. First off, as you may have guessed, the fact that you have to specify the namespace means that you can filter more than just Minecraft files with these. And in particular, you can use filters to block files from other data packs. But it can be a little bit finicky because data packs have a loading order. And when a data pack gets loaded, it can only filter files in data packs that were loaded before it. Now this is not a concern with vanilla files because vanilla always gets loaded first, but if you have multiple data packs installed and you're trying to use one to filter files from another, you have to make sure that the filtering data pack gets loaded last. And of course, you need to make sure that your namespace is right and the path to the file is correct. And speaking of the path to the file, this path string does not have to be an exact file name. It will filter any file that starts with whatever path this is. So if, for example, I were to remove the last bit and just say recipe slash diamond, this filter would block all recipes that start with diamond. So if I reload again, and then I go back to the crafting table with a full stack of diamonds, I can try searching for diamond anything, and uh, nothing comes up. Okay, there's a smithing template, but any recipe that starts with diamond is completely missing. And no, this is not a result of me having uh, a lack of recipes because I did grant myself every single recipe before I started this video. So all of the diamond recipes, including all the diamond tools, armor, diamond block, everything, are just completely gone, thanks to this filter that matches all recipes that start with diamond. Now if I were to do this and just leave it as recipe, well this would be blocking every single recipe in the entire game, and I wouldn't be able to craft or smelt or 
smith or do anything in any sort of recipe table. With the exception of brewing stands, because for some reason those are still not data-driven. Come on, Mojang. Anyway, I've been showing you a bunch of examples with just recipes, but again, this is not limited to just recipes. You'll see that I have every single advancement unlocked right now, and that is because I used a command to do so. Oh wait, no, no, I totally got all those by myself. But if I filter advancement slash and reload, okay, there's a bug where the advancements still show up. But if I try to run the command advancement grant at s only, there's nothing in tab complete. There are no more advancements. Advancements do not exist in the game anymore. I don't really know what this bug is about where the advancements still show up for the player, but apparently this is client side only, so the server does not recognize these advancements anymore. If I were to relog, these would all go away. Now, another cool thing is that while you cannot filter, you know, world gen files or anything that isn't reloadable, you can filter tags, and that includes world gen tags. So if I were to filter tags that start with world gen slash biome slash has structure, I'd be removing all the vanilla tags that tell structures where to spawn, and the upshot of that would be that structures, just all structures, would no longer spawn in this world. Now, if I save and and reload. Something I will warn you about when it comes to tags is that if you filter a tag, the game will think it still exists, but it will be empty. So if you're testing for that tag, if it has been filtered, you'll still be able to test for it, but it will always return false, which I think is also a bug. I think it's supposed to be completely removed. You can see that I'm in a plains biome, and even though this is an old style village, because this world was generated in like 1.10 or whatever, a village definitely did spawn here. So villages are allowed to spawn in plains. But if I test for the tag, has structure slash village plains, and then I press enter, the test will fail because the tag was filtered, which means it is now empty and it no longer even contains the planes biome. So moral of the story, you can filter tags, it's just weird, watch out for it. Now before I go any further, I'm sure there are several of you who are asking, how exactly do I get these paths? Like where do I find exactly the path that I want to filter? Now even if you weren't asking that question, I think you will want to keep watching because I have a really really cool trick for that that is also useful well beyond the scope of of filtering. So I'm going to go into my computer's files. I currently have uh, the data pack pulled up, but if I go up here into the search bar and type percent app data percent slash dot minecraft, I will be in my computer's internal minecraft files. So if I go to the folder called versions, and then I go to the version that I'm currently playing on, which is 1.21.1, I'm currently using the jar, but I can copy it, so I'm just going to copy it over, and then I'm just going to rename it from dot jar to dot zip. And now that it's a zip file, I can go into it. it. Might take a little bit to load, but these are the game's files. All these class files are compiled Java files, basically. I mean, if you were to open one up, they are complete nonsense. But the cool part are these assets and data folders. Assets is the vanilla resource pack and data is the vanilla data pack. If I go into data, I get the Minecraft namespace and here is the vanilla data pack. These are all the vanilla files. So when I'm running my filters, I want to start under the Minecraft namespace and then just document every folder I hit until the file I want to remove. So the filter I've got loaded right now is tags, world gen biome has structure. If I go into the vanilla data pack, I can go to tags, world gen biome has structure is a folder, right? And since I specified that, it will filter everything that matches this path, which is to say everything that is under this folder. I basically filtered out all of these files. Like in my current version of the game, these files no longer exist. Now let's say, for example, I just wanted to prevent the player from crafting TNT or something of the sort. I'll use TNT as an example. Well, I'm under the Minecraft folder. That's my starting place. And I know that's my starting place because that is the namespace I have listed right here. And then to craft TNT, the file is under recipe slash and there's a lot of files here, but you can find tnt.json. So Minecraft recipe tnt.json. The filter looks like Minecraft recipe slash tnt.json. JSON. And that is how you do a filter. As I said, it is safe to filter advancements, loot tables, recipes, structures, as in the raw NBT files and not the world gen structures, tags, and also functions, which are not in the vanilla data pack, but you can filter functions from a different data pack if you want to. Oh, and you can also filter item modifiers and predicates, which just like functions, they're not in vanilla, but they can be in someone else's data pack. One last thing about filters, these are not data pack exclusive. They also work in resource packs. So resource packs have a pack.mc meta, just like data pack do. And right next to pack, you can add the filter object just in exactly the same way. And in resource packs, you can filter out anything that is in the vanilla resource pack. Now, why you would want to do this, I'm not entirely sure, because you can't usually gain anything from removing something from a resource pack, uh, or at least not that I've been able to think of, but if you want to do it, you are totally able to. And yeah, I think that's about going to do it for filters. Let me know if this has been helpful. I have been Conyer, and thank you so much for watching, my dudes. I'll see you later.